Good evening. At the very outset, I must thank uh, the IBDNC for asking me to speak on outlining a simple approach to a complex periandal fistula. Uh, we know that there are multiple classification systems which are available for uh, periandal fistula. And what we want to talk about today is the complex perianal fistula. Now, there may be various types of complex fistula. There may be a trans sphincteric fistula, which is high, that is above the dentate line. The internal opening is above the dentate line. Or it may be an extra sphincteric fistula or a supra sphincteric fistula. So, uh, this depends upon whether. Uh, it is excluding the external sphincter or the entire sphincter, uh, including the internal and the external sphincter. Now, if there are multiple internal openings or the fistula is cross, crossing the midline or there are associated perianal abscesses or a communication with adjacent structures, the fistula becomes a complex fistula. Now, why are these fistulas difficult to treat? Uh, as you know that they have low closure rates and even when they close, they may have a high recurrence rate. That is because of a high pressure area at one of the openings. The fact that the fistula is a, has a cylindrical topography with a poorly regulated inflammation and there may be uh, microorganisms which are present inside the fistula, which may uh, result in non-healing. Further, there may be epithelization of certain tracts and then the entire fistula may not become uh, closed. So what are the goals of therapy in these patients? The goals of therapy include control of infection, drainage, and eventual closure of the fistula. And while interventions are done to this, ensure that the sphincter function is preserved so that there is an improvement in the quality of life and eventually that there is a non-recurrence of these fistulas. So coming to evaluation, the first part of course is the clinical evaluation. Apart from assessment of underlying IBD, we need to see the perianal lesions, whether there are any ulcers, what is the site of the opening of uh, fistula externally, whether there is any discharge or what kind of discharge is there on gentle pressure and whether there is any tenderness which may suggest an abscess. The next step is to delineate uh, the anatomy of the fistula and usually an MRI is of help for this particular purpose. Uh, the endoanal ultrasound is also equally good and certain patients may be uh, requiring examination and the anesthesia. So a large majority of these fistulas can be delineated uh, with any of these investigations and if we use two, then virtually all of these can be uh, delineated. The next step is management and treatment. And we know that if there are any fistulas, uh, the associated abscesses with the fistulas, these need drainage and use of antibiotics to control the pelvic sepsis. Now, seton drainage is required in most, if not all of the patients with perianal fistula. This is because we want to avoid a fistulotomy, which may result in sphincter dysfunction uh, because of the high uh, involvement. Now, the material used for seton drainage are very, very variable, including sutures, vascular slings, rubber bands. But what we want here, usually in Crohn's disease uh, related complex fistula, is a draining kind of loose seton rather than a cutting seton. Now, when do we remove these setons? So, some of the, this is, this is a matter of uh, personal choice for the patients, and many of the patients may be okay with a permanent indwelling kind of seton, which may be replaced off and on and uh, there is epithelization and chronic drainage, but most of the patients would want a closure of the fistula and therefore uh, the optimal timing is probably uh, within a short period of starting MTTNFs. Now coming to the medical therapy, as far as the guidelines go, the therapy with the immunomodulators or antibiotics alone is not recommended by the guidelines, but that may be an option in resource limited setting. Infliximab is the therapy of choice, and it has clearly been shown to uh, induce and maintain fistula remission in perianal Crohn's disease in, in randomized trials. 
Now, at least for initial therapy, the dose of five milligram versus 10 milligram is similar. At any map, there is indirect data, and this may be an agent to use in patients who do not or have lost response to infliximab. There is some data, uh, indirect data for cetolizumab. Now, how do we optimize anti-GNF? Let's say if a person is not responding and then the definition of non-response also is not very, very clear, but uh, if an individual is not responding clinically or on imaging, then we may want to increase the response to anti-GNFs and this is by use of concomitant antibiotics or maintaining a higher trough levels in some of these patients by using uh, add-on immunomodulators. Now, let's say that uh, there is a lack of healing in presence of active uh, IBD, then this may be a case to change the biologics. And in fact, there is some emerging data, although not direct data, which suggests that vedolizumab may be useful in patients with CD-related perianal fistula. In fact, the enterprise trial showed a healing in almost 50% of the patients. And in a recent meta-analysis, the pool response was around 35%. Similarly, for risticinumab, the clinical response in a systematic review of 25 studies is 44% at six months and around 54% at 12 months. Again, in patients with active CD, the other uh, options for treatment of perianal fistulas is filgotinib, which uh, of course is not yet available in India, but there's data presented in a recent uh, ECO conference. There is data for use of tacrolimus, and then there is uh, uh, observational data for hyperbaric oxygen. In fact, in this meta-analysis done by us, you can see that the pooled total, total fistular healing was almost reported in 50% of the patients uh, with hyperbaric oxygen. Now, the other option, of course, is the surgical procedures, uh, apart from, of course, CETON, but these procedures are done when you have healing of the underlying IBD and you are trying only to treat the fistulas. So if we look at the surgical procedures, then the first of course are the disconnection procedures where you try to disconnect the fistula. So here you can see that there is an internal opening and with the advancement flap using the rectal mucosa, this has been closed. So this is done in, of course, inactive disease, the pool success is around 60% with an incontinence rate of 8%, and this is one of the suggested therapies. The other new procedure, of course, is ligation of the intersphinctric uh, fistula tract. So you can see this is the intersphinctric area, and here the fistula has been ligated. And this, of course, is done only in the setting of inactive luminal disease with a pool success of 53% in uh, metanalysis and a lower incontinence rate as compared to advancement flap. But the eco guidelines do not recommend this because of that uh, paucity of enough data. Then the other procedure could be filling the fistula tract and closing that tract. One of the option of course is fibrin glue where an injection is done from the external opening and the glue is seen coming through the internal opening resulting in a mechanical sealing. Now, this is known to increase the fistula closure after cetone removal and recommended as one of the potential therapies. Now, plugging the anal fistula uh, while the cetone is removed has been compared in a randomized trial with cetone removal alone and has similar closure rates and is not recommended as a therapy in Crohn's disease-related disease chronic uh, complex anal fistula. The next, of course, is uh, ablative therapies where either laser or cautery could be used to ablate the tract, but there, is only, there are only a few case studies uh, to report in Crohn's disease. The next surgical op option, of course, is the fecal diversion, uh, which can be used in non-healing fistulas or even in presence of active IBD. And this results in almost a 64% clinical response and when a restoration is attempted, actually there may be a recurrence of the disease. Now, some of the patients uh, would eventually need a proctectomy and a permanent diversion. And although many of us would think of this as a failure of therapy, for some of the patients, it may be a, a life-changing surgery and the quality of life may actually improve. Of course, this is not the end of the story. And some of the patients will suffer because of poor wound healing and collections in the dead space. 
Now, the other question, of course, is surgery versus medical therapy. And this was a randomized trial, the PISA trial, which included 44 patients with perianal Crohn's disease with high fistula and a single opening, all of whom received antibiotic cetone drainage. And they were randomized to a chronic cetone drainage for one year, anti-TNF for one year with cetone removed, and then anti-TNF induction followed by a surgical closure. And you look that the reintervention, whether it was surgical or anti-TNF, you can see that the recurrence rates were very high for chronic cetone drainage. But in the same cohort, there were patients who were not willing to be randomized because they had a preference for certain therapy. And here you can see the re-intervention rates were similar across the therapy, meaning thereby that the patient preferences play an important role in eventually deciding what is the appropriate therapy for that particular patient. Now, there is an emerging role for stem cells and both uh, bone marrow or adipose tissue stem, mesenchymal stem cells have uh, proved to be useful in this particular uh, condition. But of course, uh, this is a costly therapy uh, and the exact place is not yet very, very clear. So for Crohn's disease and perianal fistula, you first treat the associated complications like abscess. Most of these patients will need antibiotics, drainage with cetone, and you start them on anti-TNFs. There are certain situations which are as yet unclear about cetone drainage, especially the time of removal. Now, once there is a response, you try to attempt closure with medical therapy. And if there is a response, the cetone is removed and you follow these patients up. Now, if there is no improvement or the fistula persists, but there is active IBD, you can switch over to other biologics or medical therapies. If, however, there is no active IBD, but the fistula remains open, there are surgical procedures, especially the disconnection procedures, which may be attempted. There is an emerging role for stem cell therapy, uh, and this could possibly be above the surgical procedures uh, in the eventual algorithm. And finally, if patients do not respond, there may be a need for a fecal diversion. So there are two questions which I was supposed to answer. What, what is a simple approach to complex fistula? Well, as Einstein said, and I don't have anything to add, everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. And whether it is the surgeon or the physician first, well, I'll just quote Helen Keller here, that alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. Thank you.